We'll bring Ricky Vitalico, who just got done Philly's post game on Comcast Sportsnet. So we do appreciate him jumping right on with us. And I was watching the post game last night, kind of agree with a lot of the things that he was fired up about, and it carried over. It seemed like into today, and they lose four nothing. Ricky, uh, we appreciate a couple minutes of your time. How you doing? Good. How are you? We're doing good, and uh, you know, I wanted to get your opinion on because last night I was watching the post game. I couldn't agree with you more with the way the pace of that game really played a factor in that game last night, and then it seemed like the Phillies kind of were very deflated with the way they lost last night, and you kind of saw that in the energy they had today. Yeah, their energy level wasn't very good today. Obviously, Brian Howard out of the lineup, Jeff Franco out of the lineup. I think that was more, it seemed as though it was almost more of a benching that he was going to get that anyway, regardless if it was a day game or a night game because he's been struggling. Uh, yeah, there wasn't there wasn't much energy. Quite frankly, uh, Jaime Garcia threw 82 pitches through seven innings today. That, that I think that's a story within itself. I mean, there's a guy that could walk batters and will walk some. Although he was throwing a lot of fastballs in his last start, so he tried to attack the fastball. Well, the Phillies did, and they came up empty. A lot of ground ball out. Ricky Vitalico with us, and Ricky, I know last night replay was a big story, that five-minute replay that took forever, and and you have no shortage of opinion on replay and the way uh, it's used. Perhaps you could tell us about that. I think it should be bang, bang. It should be there and done. I, I don't believe in five minutes. What, what are you looking at? Who, who, who is the reason why it's taking five minutes to make a call? Baseball makes a lot of money. Put an official in every stadium. Have him specialize in watching the film. And that's it. I, I just, oh, man, I mean, if they don't get it done in a minute and a half, the, the call on the field is bad. It's it, it, it basketball. And quite frankly, I think when you look at things right now, you have this idea that this is a great system. I, I don't. I'm not buying into it. I watch. I, I say to myself, there's certain plays where I'll look at it, and within, within 30 seconds, we'll have the call. Instead of this step two and a half, three minutes, I figured I'd get the call back to the end, but they don't. It's just too much. And I really believe that the that the uh, manager should get a red flag just like football, not wait, number one, for Larry Bella to say, yeah, go ahead and, and do it. Either throw the flag right off the bat or you don't. I think that's part of the problem also. Yeah, Ricky Vitalik is with us. Yeah, you know, so you're not against replay in general, just the way that it has been used or the way that it is, you know, played out is, is, is kind of what you're saying, right? You have a pitcher standing out there last night for five minutes. I don't care if you tell him to throw, hey, why don't you throw some pitches? That's not the same as being in the game. What does he want to throw extra pitches for in the game when they don't mean anything? This, this is it's a problem in baseball. Uh, I wouldn't want to be the pitcher that's out there sitting for five minutes waiting to see your next your next batter. I, I just think it's a strange feeling for the pitcher. I, I don't get it. I think it could be done quicker. I think it could be done cleaner, and that's just with with more I guess resources and resources at each ballpark, not just in New York. Well, it's funny. I thought you made the point last night and that you, you preface it by saying, look, I'm very good friends with an umpire, but you were almost like, what do they need it for? A guy could sit in front of a screen and just hit a red or green button out safe, you know, and it just lights up in the in the stadium. You know, you get to the point where you're like, why are we allowing these guys to even have the human error involved if we're waiting this long to try to get it fixed? Well, in reality, there is no more human error, is there? Well, they don't always get they don't always get those calls right, even with the replay. It seems like. Yeah, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, last night's foul ball or fair ball afterwards is still questionable. But I mean, you know, if it's called right away on the field and it's called foul, that that ball should have been after a minute and a half. It, it should be like, all right, forget it, it's foul. We, we can't we can't find anything else. Uh, Ricky Metallic is with us, of course. Uh, you were a closer, Ricky. You're seeing Gomez, Neris. These two guys are really the eighth and ninth inning guys. You know, if you think that this team could has some legs to it, these guys are going to be very key. One concern for me would be, man, if you're calling on these guys every single night, like because they're going to have to. They're not going to score enough to where the eighth and ninth inning guys aren't going to be important. Are these two guys 
viable? Are they the real deal to you? Can we say, you know what? They found two guys that we didn't know a lot about, but these guys are legitimate. Yeah, yeah they're pretty legit. I mean, you know, Gomez is nine for ten. That's, that's nothing to shake your head at. That's pretty good. I mean, he had a rough one last night. A lot of things didn't go well for him. You move on from that game, and that's that. Harris is just a fancy. My concern with Harris is throwing 50 something percent hitters. When, when does your elbow say no more? <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of foot to be thrown, and that's a lot of strain on the arm. So, but, but besides that, I mean, he strikes, he strikes out a lot of batters. He's got 27 strikeouts this season already. Um, doesn't walk very many. In, in reality, when you look at the numbers and what they do, you could actually flip pop that, and it would be a positive also. You could, you could have Harris close. Uh, you could have Gomez set up. Gomez is more of a one pitch type pitcher. He just wants to in his own, let you get yourself out. Harris is more like, I just want to strike you out type guy. So, I mean, they're two completely different pitchers, which actually helps being a setup and a closer because they're not seeing the same type of pitches in the eighth as they did in the ninth. Ricky Vitalico with us here on 97.3 ESPN FM. So, Ricky, after last night's drama and then today getting shut out, is this the start of a downward spiral in your mind for the Phillies, or do you think they'll be competitive for the rest of the summer? Well, I think they'll be competitive. I, I just think they desperately need to find some offense. I mean, I, I don't. You're not watching a uh, different game than I am, and what I'm seeing is. They struggle offensively. A lot of singles. When you need a lot of singles, it's hard to throw up. And especially like in a game like today, where you have your Sunday lineup out there. I call it the Sunday lineup. <laughs> where you have no Ryan Howard. You have no Franco. Well, where's your pop? Where's your home runs coming from? You, you can't really find anybody. You mentioned... So it's a it is what it is. I mean, the Phillies are offensively uh, sour at this point in the season. But I know you've been high on Franco, and then did I hear you in the beginning quickly say that this today was a message sitting him, or just what was your I take? Think it was a me- I think it was a message. It was kind of one of those things where I want you to sit back, watch the game, and see what happens from here, and just relax. I mean, because I think that's his biggest problem is that he knows that at this point people want him to be a 30-home run guy with 100 RBIs. And when you hear that and when you start to believe it, you start to press a little bit. And I think he's been, I mean, if anybody on this team is pressing, it's 100% him. And when you when you get a day off, when you've been sat down twice in a double split in the last four games, five games now, yeah, there's obviously something going on there. And Pete wants him to uh, try to relax his mind and body. Hey, Ricky, you know, we were just talking about this the other day, and we just saw it with the Flyers where maybe they got they were there a little early, and they were very patient, and Ron Hextall had said, you know, we're not going to do anything at the trade deadline. We got some guys in the minors that we think could help us. Is that something similar? Like if the Phillies are hanging around, I think they have the pitching and defense to at least be competitive. Now, they don't hit a lick. Maybe they wait for all tear and ashy just to help them become mediocre, but do you think – there will be patient regardless of where they are around that trade deadline? I think there has to be some patience. I mean, you don't want to ruin what you have. You've got a bunch of young guys playing to the best of their ability, showing some – their biggest thing, and, and I heard this from Clark talk a bunch in spring training, is energy. They want energy. Well, you got energy because here's the deal. These guys that are playing for the most part, I exclude Ryan Howard, Tyler Fury. These guys that are playing have not gotten their big contract, okay? This game is played for contract. There's always what anybody thinks. You're playing a baseball game, but in the long run, you're also playing this game for financial stability. And I think we all agree with that, all right? Ricky Vitalik, go with us. Hey, Ricky. And, 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 yeah, go ahead. I want to know if there's any young bats that you'd like to see come up because we're talking about offensive issues and, and who do you think, uh, especially in the corner outfield, who do you think could come up and maybe make a difference there? Well, it's a real danger point to really start bringing up the kids right now. Um, you know, because you're asking them to fill a role that you don't know if they could fill at this point. You, you really are. You're trying to push some guys up. But, you know, that being said, Nick Williams is starting to heat up down in AAA. I think that's a huge positive. He's the, he's the biggest thing that everybody wants to hear. 
Ronald Quinn is in double A. He started heating up right now. Another guy, Sam Perkins, who kind of fell off the radar a little bit, he's hitting well down in triple A. So I think those three guys, outfield wise, uh, could be some help. I know a lot of people say, well, they got Will Venable. What's he doing? He has been struggling. So Will Venable is falling off right now, I believe, at this point. So what you have is some younger guys uh, down there who are starting to heat up. And, you know, you never know. Towards, towards mid-season, maybe, maybe not even that quickly, uh, you'd probably see some of these guys. Ricky, I guess uh, being a pitcher, you've got to be excited about what you see from not only the pitching on the big league roster, but what's behind it. And I think that's why fans should be excited about this team moving forward is really the fruits of the trades, the the, the Hamels deal and the Giles tr- trade, a lot of those key components other than uh, Velasquez, they're not even really up here yet. So that's something that a lot of fans should be very excited about, that there is even more pitching behind this group that we're seeing now. Well, uh, Zach Eflin, Mark Appel, those guys are pitching really well. Jake Thompson's a guy that, that hasn't started the season great, but he's another guy that everybody's keeping their eye on. They have an abundance, abundance of starting pitching right now. And to me, that's, that's outstanding because sooner or later, what's going to happen is either you have a trade, a trade chip that you may need or you may have a closer sitting in the bucks. Because you can't have 12 starters in the big leagues, you know that that, and that's a good problem to have for Phillies. Who, who, let's face it, before these trades of Giles and Rollins and all the and Utley and all these guys and the like, they didn't have that. They didn't have that to fall back on. They do now, which is a huge, huge plus. Yeah, and of course, uh, Ricky Metallica is with us. He just finished up uh, on Phillies post game there uh, on Comcast Sportsnet, and you see him often on pre and post game. Where of course uh, the Phillies lose today four to nothing against the Cardinals, so they lose three out of four in that series. But you know, moving forward, uh, the, we 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 talk about that pitching, and as you said, the offense is a problem here. I want to ask you about the manager and your thoughts on him and how important a role the manager can play on a team exceeding expectations. Uh, I think it's a, a fairly large role. I think, you know, he's the one that's writing the cards. He's the one that's putting these guys in the lineup. He's trying to get the right formulas together. So I, he's got those things going for him. Um, I also think that everybody respects him. I, I think he's a respected guy. He's been around the league a long time. Uh, Managing not so long, but around the league a long time. He knows his baseball. He knows what kind of team he has. He knows what he has to do to try to scrape together some runs because, let's face it, when you don't have the pop, he's the guy that's got to do it. Also, the one thing that, that has to be pointed out is the one thing that he has to do well throughout the whole season is make sure he gets those bullpenners rest when they need rest. Or else he's going to end up in a situation where in June and July, he's going to have guys that are struggling. And that's not what you need with the team because of your starting rotation. You've got a very good starting rotation. You want to keep the bullpen fresh. So I think that's going to be his biggest challenge as we go along. Yeah, and then, of course, managing how long you stick with young pitchers in games, too. He's got a really tough uh, job on his hand, almost like the job you probably have working for Thompson when he's producing endgame. <laughs> he's game. not working for me. He works with me. <laughs> well, when you're giving him stuff to say or putting stuff in other people's ears, that's got to be real tough. We are a team. <laughs> when, no- when we are on those shows, we work as a team. So, um, you know, Pete, Pete's a good guy. He, he, he's got his stuff down, and – we work well together. Even the extra inning games, right. <laughs> uh, the extra inning games are, are the pushers. And, and his end game. Ricky loves end game. Let's just say that. Ricky loves so end game. I'm waiting for the 4 a.m. Mitch Williams type no, of game no, this year. No, All right. God, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Ricky no, Metallico, no, no. Comcast Sports Ed, pre and post game uh, for Phillies baseball here on the Sports Best. Thanks, Ricky. Thanks, bud. See you Thank tomorrow. You guys have a good one.